just thank God for the privilege, the privilege of salvation, the privilege of Palm Sunday. Pray this morning that the Lord in his mercy will reveal to you the significance of the Palm Sunday, the significance of that triumphant entry. Thank you, Holy Father, for across the world today, your triumphant entry is being celebrated. Oh, Holy Father, cause that celebration, oh Lord, to resound in our hearts, to resound in our lives, to wake us up, oh Lord, to wake us up to the reality of salvation this morning. Oh, Father, we thank you. We raise our Hosanna to you this morning. We join all who are crying out Hosanna. We say, Lord, we say Hosanna. Our Hosanna should be the loudest to the highest. Let's cry Hosanna this morning. Hosanna this morning. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the name of Jesus. Hosanna, for blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are worthy of our praise, O oh Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the name of Jesus. Hosanna in the highest. Oh, we glorify your holy name and we raise Hosanna to you this morning. With a heart full of
endureth forever. Amen. For his mercies endureth forever. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, the angels are singing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, the angels are singing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hosanna. Save us, O Lord, we beseech you. Hosanna. 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 Father, we come before you this morning, raising our palm fronts to you and raising our hosannas to you, living God. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that in your mercy, you will bless us with a true revelation of what this means, O Lord, that it will not be a religious exercise, O Lord. O King of kings and Lord of lords, we cover our assembly with the blood of Jesus. We come before you very expectant. We ask, O oh Lord, that you decode to us all we need to know today. That this Palm Sunday will not be like all the other Palm Sundays. That it will be a Palm Sunday of victory in the name of Jesus. That we will walk in the victory in the name of Jesus. Mm. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Welcome to a Palm Sunday service. Amen? Amen. We're going to worship with revelation. Amen? We're going to worship with understanding. We're going to celebrate with understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We thank God that before we were born... Palm Sunday was already established. We came as children and experienced the joy of one playful Sunday where we can take our cross and our palm and just go around without really understanding what it meant. But we knew that from Palm Sunday will come that Holy Week. And then on Friday, it will be Good Friday. And for some of us, it means we won't eat meat that day. 
and then we'll have to just bear with fish for one day and we never could understand why. And then we thank God that Easter Sunday comes and all the delicacies come out and spring is here. That is the religious aspect of the Holy Week. But this morning I was just asking the Lord about Hosanna and Palm Sunday. And I believe that before we get into true worship, he wants us to understand what it means to say Hosanna and why the Jews said Hosanna that day. Brethren, during the triumphant entry of our Lord Jesus into Jerusalem, the people were crowded around the gate watching Jesus enter the city. And they were celebrating and calling out Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Their shout of Hosanna indicates their hope that their Messiah had finally come. That he had come to set up God's kingdom there and then. How he has come to save them from the oppression of all their oppressors. And they were hoping that he will set up a human kingdom. That's why some of his disciples lobbied their mother to lobby him so that they can sit on the right and on the left, that they can have cabinet positions. Because the Jewish understanding at the time was that a Messiah was coming. And if this was he, then it's time for that reign, that kingdom that will never come to an end. But because God had us in mind, he said, no, it wasn't the time. This time he had come to save. This time he had come for atonement. This time he had come to pay the debt we owe. This time he's come to reconcile us to God. This time he's come in the cry of our spiritual need that we are not intellectually aware of that we need a savior. And when they watched him get crucified, they were disappointed. And that's why till today they are still waiting for the Messiah to come. But we know that he came to save us from our sins. Amen? And beyond saving us from our sins, we need to understand why it is that they carried the palm, the palm front. So when we, when we wave it and sing in praise, we will know why we're doing it. The carrying of the palm originated from the Jewish festival called the, the Feast of Tabernacles. And the observance of that, that feast, worshippers processed through Jerusalem and in their temple, waving in their hands something called lulab, which is a bunch of leafy branches made of willow, myrtle, and palm. And as they waved the branches in that procession, the worshippers recited the words from Psalm 118. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. And to, to the Jews, the palms are a celebratory symbol that God, the victorious one, tabernacles with humanity. It was their symbol that the king has come to dwell with them. Their Messiah had come. At the time that the triumphant entry took place, the Feast of Tabernacle had not yet come. But because they understand, just as we understand that Independence Day, we do firecrackers and all the barbecue, the things we do when we celebrate, that was the way the Jews celebrated. And when they saw him in recognition and in the hope that they've had over the ages that a savior will come, that a messiah will come, they thought he had come and he had come to stay for good, that he was going to kick out everybody. And so they were, they were reciting the word, Hosanna, Hosanna. Now, because it's celebratory and we wave the palms to him for victory, a lot of people understand Hosanna to just mean praise. But if we turn to Psalm 118, Psalm 118, we will see in verse 25, it says, save, save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh 
in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when we say Hosanna, we are asking for salvation. When we wave the palm, we are waving it to the king of kings who is able to save us to the uttermost. Where do I need salvation? Where do you need salvation? The king of kings is able. He is more than able to give us that salvation. So because it is celebratory, over the centuries, it's been interpreted to mean praise. But really, Hosanna means save us now. We beseech you. How many need his salvation? How many need him to save you? I do in, ma in many ways. So let's rise up on our feet now and worship him with that understanding that our Hosanna is a cry for him, our king, to save us. Oh, Hosanna. before you. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord of Lords, Lord we name with a heart full of 
a song that we sang a few years ago on this platform and it's called Zafnath Panea. Zafnath Panea is the name that Pharaoh gave to Joseph and it's decoded to mean the savior of the world. And I remember six years ago just around this time working on my laptop, trying to get a flyer done out for a Good Friday service. And the Holy Spirit wrote on that flyer. I didn't write it. I don't know the spelling of Zafnath Panea, but I just saw him. I saw the word Zafnath Panea inscribed on that flyer. And alarmed, because I didn't know the meaning of the word and what it meant, but I knew that my sense was fighting. Even the idea of a Good Friday service in New York when it's not a public holiday. And I think the Holy Spirit wanted to encourage me. And he wrote that word, Zafnath Panea, there. And when I saw that word, I checked in my Bible and found out that it was the name Pharaoh gave to Joseph and it meant the savior of the world. And in the last few days, the Lord has been bringing it back to my mind. And so I remember the song that we sang there. It just says, Zafnath Panea, and then it says, Save us now, we beseech thee, thou savior of the world. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Jesus, my savior, savior of the world. Praise the Lord. So <clears throat> it goes, we sing it with the tune of Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. So let's try it. Hallelujah. Zafnath Paniya Zafnath Paniya Save us now We beseech thee Thou Savior Savior of the world. 
Jesus, my Savior, Savior of the world. Jesus, my Savior, you are the Savior of the world. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And there is a, a hymn that's a Palm Sunday hymn I'd like us to do. It's called Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. I'll check if it's in any of our books. I pray it is. If not, maybe you will find it on the PowerPoint. Is it there? Praise the Lord is here. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Hear all the tribes, Hosanna cry. Oh, Savior, make your road pursue with palms and scattered garments strewn. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Oh, Christ, your triumphs now begin. Oh, captive death and conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty. The hosts of angels in the sky look down with sad and wandering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Bow your meek head to mortal pain, then take, O oh Christ, your power and reign. Thank you, Jesus, for you reign in our hearts. You reign, you are God from beginning to the end. For you are my God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God, you are my God. From beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by You are my God from beginning to the end. Papa, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are my God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument, Lord. You are God all by yourself. You are my God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself Alpha my beginning Omega my very end You are worthy to be praised only 
God. Only you, only you, only you are God. I have no other God but you. 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 For yes, you are the Lord, the Most High. Yes, you are. Lord, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Lord Jesus, most high, yes, you are the Lord, you are the Lord, most high, yes, you are the Lord, most high, yes, you are the Lord, you are my God, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. The most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Patient of days, you are lily of the valley, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. King of kings, you are the most high. The most high God, you are the most high, you are the most high God, hallelujah, you are the most high, Jehovah, you are the most high God, you are the most high, you are the most high God. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God.
the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. The most high reigneth. The most high reigneth. The most high reigneth in my life today. The most high reigneth. The most high reigneth. The most high reigneth in my life today. The King of Kings reigneth. The Lord of Lords reigneth. The King of Kings reigneth in my life today. The most I reigneth, the most I reigneth, the most I reigneth in my life today.
Hosanna, O Lord. Hosanna, O Lord. Hosanna, O Lord. Hosanna, O Lord. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 call your Savior, Hosanna, 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 call on him now, Hosanna, Hosanna, I celebrate God, Hosanna, 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 hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Brethren, I believe the Lord gave me this song about a week ago so that we can cry it to him. Amen? I woke up singing this song, hearing this song in my spirit and singing it. I don't know if some of you know it, but I was hearing it for the first time in my spirit. And when I got in here, I wanted us to sing it, but the tune just went off my head. But while we were worshiping, it came back. Amen. Praise the Lord. And since he has decoded to us the meaning of Hosanna, we're going to sing that song one more time, but this time with a cry in our heart for salvation. When, since we know that Hosanna means save us now, we beseech you. When you cry that Hosanna, you are crying for divine intervention instantly. You are crying that God will come into every situation in your life and divinely intervene to make a difference. Amen? Amen. We, we are a people who understand that we need a savior. How many need a savior? I do. Hallelujah. So when we sing that song one more time, sing it with a cry of prayer in your heart. Hallelujah, Hosanna. 
Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, save us now, save us now, save us. Hallelujah, save us now, save us now, hey. Ah, hallelujah, save us now, save us now, save us. Hallelujah, save us now, save us now, save us. Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna,
we're going to sing Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, 27. It says, Behold, I am the Lord, God of all flesh. Is there anything, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything, anything, anything too hard for me? Is there anything, is there anything too hard for me? Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything, anything, anything too hard for me? Is there anything? Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 32, 17. The response is, Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Great and mighty God. Great in counsel, mighty indeed. Mighty indeed. Nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for you. Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine outstretched arms. And nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Great and mighty God, great in counsel and mighty indeed, mighty indeed, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for you. Hallelujah. Is there anything, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything, anything, anything too hard for me? Is there anything, is there anything too hard for me? We can answer and say, Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Great and mighty God, great in counsel and mighty indeed, mighty indeed. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for you. Now talk to the Lord about any matter in your life right now. For he said to us, he's the God of all flesh, and that nothing is too difficult for him. Nothing is too difficult for him. Oh, Holy Father, in your mercy hear our cry this morning. Hear our cry this morning, Lord, for nothing is too difficult. My own will not be too difficult for you. 
Lord, nothing is too difficult for you, Lord. In your mercy and in your love, intervene, O oh Lord, in every area of our lives, O oh Lord. Cover every vulnerable part of our life, O oh Lord. Father, look at every life here present. Father, nothing in our life is too difficult for you. We agree with your word, O oh Lord, that you've made the heavens and the earth by your great power. You've made the heavens and the earth by your outstretched hand. We agree with your word, Lord, that nothing, nothing, nothing is too difficult for you. You are the God we raise our Hosanna to this Palm Sunday. Lord, in remembrance of the faith and the hope of the people of yesteryears, we celebrate this Victory Sunday, Lord. The day of our, our salvation. The day that our salvation has come. Oh Lord, nothing is too difficult. Look at my life is your cry this morning. Lord, look at my life and respond to every difficult situation in my life, oh Lord. For nothing is too difficult for you. My own will not be too difficult for you. For you are the God of all flesh. Absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for you. Look at my life, O oh Lord. Look at my spirit, O oh Lord, and heal, heal every need there. Heal, heal every spiritual sickness in the name of Jesus. Look at my soul and heal every emotional sickness is your prayer this morning. Look at my body and heal every physical sickness in the name of Jesus. Let nothing in my body, soul, and spirit be too difficult for you. You are the God of all flesh. Intervene. We raise our Hosanna to you, God of victory. We raise it to you this morning. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult. Holy Father, in your mercy and in your love, we cry, O oh Lord, that you intervene. Intervene in our professional life, O oh Lord. Intervene, perfect all that concerns us professionally, we pray this morning. Perfect all that concerns us economically. Look at our economic situations, O oh Lord. Look at the past, the economic life, and the economic program of every life here. Look at the economic program of your temple here. Look at every situation economically and intervene. It is not too difficult for you. Lord, you've told us that your speed is equal to your utterance. Speak something great and good concerning our lives, spiritually, socially, physically, emotionally, economically, professionally. Speak it, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name we pray this morning. We raise our Hosanna and we cry for divine intervention. Hosanna Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now, we beseech you. Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now, we beseech you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed this morning? Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. We are having... Hmm. Palm Sunday service, but we call it the Hosanna service, save us service, save us now. It's an SOS service, raising a cry to the heavenlies to save us from every situation. As I said earlier on, Palm Sunday originates from the Jewish festival, which they call Sokoth, and it's also called the Feast of tabernacles or the Feast of Boots. And in the olden days, in the time of Christ, the Jews, during the Feast of Tabernacles, worshipped by making a procession through Jerusalem in the tem and in the temple, waving their, in their right hands something called the lulab. And it's a bunch of branches made of willow, metal, and palm. And as they waved the branches in that procession, the worshippers recited the words from Psalm 118. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Save us. Save us in Hebrew is Hosanna. So when we say Hosanna, we're actually saying what? Save us. To the Jews, the palm tree is a celebratory symbol that God the victorious one 
tabernacles with humanity. They may not believe in Jesus, but they know that God can tabernacle, can dwell with humanity. Well, that's why they celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Brethren, as they cried that day for salvation, we are crying this day for what? For salvation. What was the cry for Jesus to save them from? What were they crying for? When they were shouting Hosanna that day, what were they crying for? What salvation were they crying for? Brethren, what did Jesus come to do? He came to save us from our sins. And there are no people who are so in their own minds sin free as the Christians. Sadly, we have become so self-righteous that asking for forgiveness seems like you've done something terrible. But brethren, today the Lord is asking us to connect with the benefits of forgiveness. For what Jesus came to save them from was from the repercussions of their sins. If God should mark iniquities in our lives, no one shall stand here. Therefore, in this season, beyond the celebration and the religious ceremonies, may we take advantage of what heaven is opening up to earth right now. And that is forgiveness of sins because Jesus died. Forgiveness of sins because Jesus came. And what kind of sins? Some of you may not have committed any sin, righteous ones. But brethren, the Lord said to remind us that all of us have sins. Category one of our sins that we need to cry for salvation for. If we really mean business with this work. Is the sin of omission. The sin of omission. That means the things you are expected to do that for one reason or the other you do not do. And if anyone will say, I have no sin of omission, I will say to the person, you have no idea what God expects from you. Amen? There are what, number one, the sins of what? Omission. The things that we should have done that we did not do. And I know in all of our lives, they are many. The second categories are the sins of commission. Do you know that the devil can set you up to commit an offense? You can be minding your business and he will bring aggravation so that you will respond. And when you respond, all of a sudden, you become a responder. And the devil has prosecuted a case against you and you have responded. And in many ways, many can testify that they are in difficult situations for matters that they did not start. So if you have no sin of omission, which I think will be a delusion, for Paul, in the height of his ministry, was able to say, the good that I would, I do not, omission. The evil that I would not, that I do, commission. That's Romans 7. Paul himself was able to say that. Therefore, who are we not to acknowledge that we need him to save us from our sins of what? Omission and commission. That's why we need a savior. Amen? We also need him. We need to raise our hosanna for our omission, sins of omission and commission. And also we need to raise our hosanna, save us now for our iniquities. What are iniquities? Iniquities are repeated sins that are deliberate, but they have become normal. Mm. You see, when sin becomes iniquity, it begins to seek normalization in the social norms. There were a lot of things that were considered great sins yesterday. But some people started committing them 
and others joined them. And after joining them, it became normal. So whoever didn't do that will look like they are offended. Hallelujah. And that's what we call sin that has become normalized. And in every culture, in every life, there are iniquities. That's why in Isaiah 59, the Lord says, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, but your sins have separated you. Sins of omission, sins of commission, sins of iniquity, sins that we have become what? Comfortable with. The next level of sins that we need to ask for salvation for are the sins of ingratitude. The absence of gratefulness to God. The sins of what? Ingratitude. Wow. What brings about ingratitude? When we are seeking a new thing and the desire for that new thing becomes an obsession. And we are so engrossed in that one toy we are looking for from our father that we forget to thank him for the daily provision he's making. That we woke up this morning is a gift. Everything in our lives today, brethren, is what? A gift from God. That sin of ingratitude, the things he's done yesterday that we are not grateful for. Oh, God, forgive us. We need a savior. We need what? A savior. Because we can be sulking for one thing. I remember that in the last 48 hours, I was sulking. Sulking. Sulking about certain situations and sulking. And I sulked myself into a safe mode emotionally. I sulked myself into near depression. I sulked myself to the place where the enemy was coming to say, if God is real, why are things like this for you? If God is real, why hasn't he done it? You can sulk yourself into a conversation with the enemy. But I thank God that he has a reminder. And may God not need to, uh, it is not violent, he's loving. But may he not need to seriously remind us of what he has done in our lives. Thank, I would I thank him for his gentle reminders. And he started to take me, he said, you are complaining about six months of what you're going through. I want to show you what I've done for you in the last six months. And when I saw that, I was ashamed of myself. So brethren, in every life, there may be things that he's doing and there may be things that he's waiting for the right time for. And if we let the things that he's waiting for the right time for get us into depression, so we are not grateful for the things he's doing, we fall into the sin of ingratitude. That's why, we, that's why the Holy Spirit loved it this morning when we were singing that song. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. I am saying thank you, Jesus. Brethren, we know personally how ingratitude switches us off people. Do you want God to switch off your life? No. no. Therefore, let us make gratitude our mode of operation. Amen? Amen? Let us take down the mood of perpetually what? Being grateful. For ingratitude is a sin that we need to ask the Lord now when we cry our Hosanna to end the service to save us from. Amen? We also need to raise our hosanna for the load of errors. Bad decisions we have made. Emotional actions and reactions. May God deliver us from the repercussions of our errors, our bad decisions, our emotional actions and reactions in the name of Jesus. 
The next group of sins we need to raise our Hosanna for this morning. If we are to get the benefit of Palm Sunday, beyond raising the palm, pray that he will save us from circumstantial sins. Circumstantial sins. It's not sins you plan for, but circumstances through plunged you in it. Hallelujah. That's why he said there's nothing too hard for him. We also need to pray that he will save us from environmental sins. From what? Environmental sins. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59, makes it very clear to us. Isaiah 59. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. He details in his love to us. He says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not what? Shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, your what? iniquities. May God deliver us from our iniquities. Those are the sins that we casually commit because we are now uncomfortable with them. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Read the rest of the chapter in your own time. I can't afford to read it. That is why we need a savior to intercede and plead for forgiveness for us. Amen? If we turn to Psalm 51, a wise man named David, he took on the need for a savior seriously and penned it out for us also to benefit from in our time. Said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Brethren, David did not make excuses. David did not hide under his power. He said, I acknowledge my sin. My falling short, the areas of my word, shortcomings. I acknowledge them and they are ever before me. Brethren, like David, I need a savior to intercede for the forgiveness of my sin. That's why we celebrate Palm Sunday. For the Savior, the Lord whom we have been waiting for, has suddenly appeared. Appeared to bring forth what? Salvation. Appeared to bring forth what? Redemption. Appeared to bring forth what? Blessings. Appeared to bring forth what? Resurrection of blessings that are in coma. So if we are wise, we will sing, Lord, forgive my sins. Oh, Lord, forgive my sins. Oh, Lord, forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Oh, Lord. Before we can sing, Lord, hear my prayer. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Hear my prayer. Oh, Lord. Then we can sing, Lord, give me victory. Lord, give me victory. Lord, give me victory. Give me victory, oh, Lord. Brethren, there has to be forgiveness of sins before prayers can be heard. And prayers have to be heard before victory can come. That's why all through the Bible, the Bible is a story of sins and forgiveness and victory. 
Forgiveness, brethren, needs to be coveted, needs to be desired. If you have, if you have any prayer this week that you must make daily, it is a prayer for what? Forgiveness. If you are wise and you want to connect to what heaven is doing on earth in this season, you need to have the wisdom to pray for what? Forgiveness. It should be in your what? Daily prayer. Seriously, like David in Psalm 51, let that be your work. I thank the Lord because each week, each season, he gives us something to do. Amen? And we experience the benefits of the process. And he's saying, uh, saying to us, we should pray for what? Forgiveness. Why should we do that? Ask for forgiveness because forgiveness, number one, brings peace. How many wants peace? If you want peace, then pray for forgiveness. Forgiveness brings pardon. How many want to be pardoned? Then ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness brings blessings. How many want blessings? I want blessings. We need to ask for forgiveness. How many want restoration in this month of restoration? Then we must ask for forgiveness. How many want resurrection? Hallelujah. The blessings of resurrection then we must ask for forgiveness. Amen? Brethren, wise people know how to ask for forgiveness. If we look at David again in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 24, verse 14. Wow. <laughs> 2 Samuel 24, verse 14. And David said unto God, the prophet, said, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. Brethren, in this season, it is necessary to connect with the blessings of forgiveness. And the way to get it, to have guaranteed forgiveness, is to connect with the Savior. To come to God through the Savior. I come in the name of Jesus, and I fall into the hands of God, so that I will never fall into the hands of man. Brethren, it is better to fall into the hands of God and ask for mercy and ask for forgiveness because if you do nothing, you will fall into the hand of man. And that is not a good place to be. Because the heart of God is merciful. The Bible describes the heart of man as deceitful and desperately wicked. Do you know that the unsalvaged heart gets a high when people suffer? The unsalvaged heart enjoys it when people are in difficulty. That's why none of us must fall into the hands of man. That's why we must deliberately fall into the hands of God. Because his mercies are great. His steadfast love never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. His faithfulness is very great. We have experienced from him salvation. Brethren, our time is up. So I will have you study the stories of forgiveness in the Bible. So it will put in your heart the necessity of connecting to the component of forgiveness in this Palm Sunday, the Holy Week, Good Friday, and Easter. That by Sunday, you will be brand new. You'll be able to say like Paul, who said, the things that I would, I do not. The things that I would not, that I do. You'll be able to say like him, henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear on my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. He'll be able to say like Paul, there is therefore now no condemnation to them 
who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, what a savior. Why we need him. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the privilege of praise. A Hosanna praise. Crying to you, Lord, that you will intervene. Thank you for your intervention. Thank you for all that you've done. Lord, we say glory be to God in the highest. For his mercies endured forever. Save us, our Messiah, who comes to fulfill God's mission. Save us, we beseech you. Take your rightful throne and extend heaven's salvation to us. Brethren, may we be able to say, King of glory, King of peace, I will love you. Amen. And that love will never cease. I will move you. For you have granted my request. And you have heard me. You noted my walking breast and you have spared me. Brethren, we are where we are today. And say, Lord, save me. I raise my Hosanna to you. And I say, Lord, in your mercy and in your love, deliver me from my sins of omission. Deliver me from my sins of commission. Deliver me, O oh Lord, from my iniquity. Begin to pray this morning. Talk to God and say, Lord, the things that I have forgotten to do, forgive me, Lord. The things that I have omitted, forgive. The things I've committed, forgive me. The sins of omission, forgive, O oh Lord. I raise my hosanna to the king of kings and I say, save me from my sins of omission. Save me from my sins of commission. Save me, forgive me for my iniquity. Forgive me for my ingratitude. Forgive me for the load of error I carry confidently. Forgive me for my bad decisions. Forgive me for my emotional actions and reactions. Forgive my circumstantial sins. Forgive, O oh Lord, my environmental sin. The whole world is covered with sin and godlessness. And even when we want to do good, evil is near. That's the world we live in now. Therefore, we need to cry Hosanna to the Lord and ask him to deliver us from every sin that easily besets. Oh my God, deliver me. Deliver me, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Oh, deliver me. Cry to him this morning and let the word of God come alive in your life in the name of Jesus. Holy Father, do it all. Be glorified. Be glorified in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, forgive them all. Forgive them all, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, brethren, let us open our Bibles and read Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 23 together. Giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him 
should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in the sight of God. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made what? A minister. Finally, brethren, let's turn to Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. The Lord wants us to internalize this concept so we can get the full benefit of this season because it is a visitation that comes annually and is renewed annually. I pray that we'll be part of those who will get the full benefit of this renewal. Jeremiah chapter 33. The word of God says, and I read from verse 2. Thus said the Lord, let's read it. Thus said the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. For thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounds and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but is to fill them with the dead bodies of men, whom I have slain in mine anger and in my fury, and for all whose wickedness I have hid my face for, from this city. Behold, I will bring it, what? Health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus said the Lord, again there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and be without beast, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as the first said the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, again in this place which is desolate without man and without beast. And in all the cities thereof shall be an habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the place about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth them, said the Lord. Behold, the day is come, said the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. Blessed be God. He that hath an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. Amen. Finally, brethren, let's just close our eyes and remember the sins in Egypt who in this day of celebrating the arrival, the entry of the Savior 
have been bombed. Let us pray. Father, we bring our brethren in Egypt before you. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that in this day, Lord, you console them and give them the wisdom and the courage for the living of these days, Lord. For the people who gathered to worship have been bombed. Oh, Father, in your mercy, intervene. Intervene. We raise Hosanna for Egypt this morning. We ask, Lord, that you intervene. Intervene, oh Lord. Let your rule come in that land. Save your soul servants in that land, oh Lord. The priests who are appointed to die, oh Father, save them. We pray for them. We remember them before you. Redeem them. And let affliction not arise there again. In the name of Jesus. Also let us pray for Sweden. Oh Holy Father. What seems abstract. Oh Holy Father. Is becoming alarmingly real. We pray Lord in your mercy and in your love. That you will intervene in Sweden, that you will give wisdom to the leaders. Oh, Father, have mercy. Console the bereaved. Encourage the fearful. Give direction to the leaders. In your mercy, intervene. Not just in Sweden and in Egypt, but Lord, in Oslo, in all the places where there is threat, even in this land, Syria, Lord, remember your world. We bring your world before you, O Lord. Have mercy and bring peace, O Lord. Bring peace, O Lord. Bring peace again. Bring peace, O Lord. Bring peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. For surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. It is a holy week, and uh, we look forward to Bible study on Tuesday at 7 p.m., Faith Clinic on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. on the telephone. And then we look forward to, wow, Good Friday from 12 noon to 5 p.m. In this sanctuary, we'll be having a Good Friday service. May keep it in prayer. Invite your friends. It is still a holy day. Amen? It is still a holy day. If some of us have to take time off work, let us take it. If you see, the, the, if we don't take a stand for Christ now, mm, it will be a different world. There was a time when New York State had Good Friday as a public holiday. But no, it's no longer a public holiday. But if it is still a holy day, let us endeavor to remember the significance of our Savior's death at the cross for us. A happy holy week. May the sins that only he can forgive be totally forgiven in all of our lives. That may our prayers be answered. May we experience victory in him. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, I still have some letters of contributions here. If anybody hasn't received and they want, please see me. If it's here, I'll give it to you. I still have those letters with me. I'll be at the back, and you can collect them from me in a few minutes. God bless you. May we have, indeed, indeed, a week of hallelujahs and hosannas. In Jesus' name, amen.